Hello there, and welcome back to The Closet Historian and to a very in-the-weeds sort of overly detailed and very frustrating for graphic design professionals version of the process I took to get my design from idea onto fabric from last week's dress. So if, like me, you are a self-taught photoshopper, a novice photoshopper, hopefully this can be in any way helpful. Okay, pals, here we are. We are in Photoshop. I thought I would go ahead and walk through how I went from this scan of a sketch to my finished heat transfer designs in a much slower fashion, talk you through what I did over here in Photoshop and on Silhouette to get these designs ready to go over onto my fabric. And once again, a small disclaimer, I am not a Photoshop wizard. Um, sadly enough, when I was in school, they did not teach me any Adobe products. That was not part of my, any program I was with. So I'm just self-taught in Photoshop and in Adobe Premiere, which is what I edit my videos in actually as well. Um, so it's just whatever I've learned from YouTubing things over the years, or just poking around the software until I got myself into trouble. But even on my larger than average flatbed scanner, I actually had to scan this piece, this front bodice piece in two pieces. And so I will go ahead and just copy this first piece here, come over here. I'm going to use the crop tool to increase the size of my little canvas here. Um, so I'm just gonna make this bigger so that I have room to layer our friend on here. So if I zoom out, you can see I have this piece here and I will paste the other one on top and now I have to line these up perfectly, but the angle is probably a little bit off. And to line, I mean, the size, the scale is perfect because it's the same piece of paper on the same scanner. This lines up exactly on here, but how am I gonna line this up perfectly here? So one of the ways to do this is to go down here and hit difference. And that basically inverts the image where it overlaps. And then I can see a lot better the angle I'm supposed to be at here. So I can start aligning this. Basically, I want to get this so that the image turns entirely black. And I can use the up and down arrow key on my keyboard to actually adjust this. So I can see when this image is mostly black, the angle is a tiny bit off down here. So I can try and fix that, but I'm looking kind of right here to see. That looks, I mean, almost right on. That's about right. Um, so we have most of this. Is the angle absolutely perfect? Probably not. Um, but mostly this is all aligned. And then at this point, obviously this is making my design hard to see. I can go ahead and turn difference off. So turn this back to normal. And I will just go ahead and merge this down. And now I have my full piece here. If I were to take this magic wand tool over here, set my tolerance to, I don't know, 50. I can probably grab the outside of this, it looks like, without interfering with anything. So I can delete that. Grab this down here as well. If your um, tolerance is set at like, I don't know, 100, um, it might grab, it's going to grab more stuff and it might, if your dark background of your scanner touches any of this, it might take it with it. So just be careful that your tolerance is uh, behaving. Oh, I've just realized the clicking of my mechanical keyboard is gonna be really loud in this video. Apologies. Um, so once I have this without the background, I'm gonna actually go ahead and just take a copy by pressing the Alt key on my um, keyboard and pulling this down so I can have a copy down here. I'll just turn that off for now. This is just so if this goes poorly, I still have another copy of it below here. Um, I'm going to come in here and go to Image Adjustment Curves. If I pull this down, the image gets darker, lighter, um, I kind of want to up the brightness on this buddy until the nasty gray weirdness is gone. Hit that with an OK for now. And I'm going to go into Levels. I'm going to darken up the sketch itself. And you can see, if you keep going, it darkens up everything. But I don't want everything. Let's see, that's not bad. Go ahead and hit OK on that. Um, something I can do at this point, actually, is I can go in and select color range and I want the white here um, the fuzziness or the clarity is going to take more and less away um, I'm just going to go in the middle ish there hit delete and now I can get rid of all of that at once um, although it is kind of hard to see what we're doing when we don't have anything I'm going to create a new layer here and I'll just fill that in with white bring that underneath so I can see all these scrappy bits that we need to get rid of. So I'm going to come in here. I'm choosing the erase tool, eraser tool here. I'm just going to give this a good large size here. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I need to be selected on this layer. 
And I will just start erasing our nastiness. Living around the edges of this. Can I get rid of some of this? I'll have to double check for this stuff later. But for now, just this big stuff that I can see. Goodbye. Now, of course, my sketch is messy and kind of gross. So I'm going to come in here and start refining that. Uh, mostly just getting rid of my under sketch. Goodbye. Like that. Boop. Um, of course, again, if you were using pencil and you could have erased this under sketch, there'd be a lot less of it to mess around with once I got to this stage. Um, but that's all right. Now, I, of course, can make this smaller to get in here. Now, this image in general, while being inspired by the arts and crafts movement, like I said, um, is also inspired by stencils, uh, which are some like a really good resource for uh, HGV designs is stencil designs because they work really well. Um, for the same reason that a stencil design works very well, which is why these have these little breaks here, uh, why this design does. So I'm going to keep those little like stencil breaks. This would work very well for stenciling this design onto a wall or something like that. Same reason those are there. And anywhere like you scoop out too much, you can always come over here, grab your pen tool in the black, and smooth anything out that you don't like. The look of. Although, right now, I don't really need to finesse the things. I'm just trying to get rid of the nasties more so than anything, just because the next step will take care of some of that. And if you have a um, like tablet you can draw on, once again, that'll make this step easier as well, because I'm doing this with a mouse, which is not ideal. Basically, what I need to do here is create a clean edged black and white graphic. So that's what I'm going to go through and kind of transform this sketch into in order to import the design over into the silhouette software and cut it out using the silhouette machine. All right, so now that I have the very basics cleaned up here, I will actually grab this paint tool and I'm going to grab black. And I will just fill in any of these areas that obviously need a little helping hand here just before I do this next step. Obviously this one. She's got problems cutouts here that make it look more like a stencil. So I'm going to do that while I'm in here. Obviously there should be one right here too. I don't think there is <laughs> in the actual finished one. So that's a little bit cleaner as we can see. Now what I want to do here, um, sometimes the easiest way to find the floaties actually is to go in here and add a stroke. It'll find your floaties for you. Um, so the red here, just going to leave that at, I don't know, 10 pixels. This is all the extra stuff. Let me step back. So one thing you can do here is once you have identified your floaties, um, you can go ahead and up this. And as, soon, as, as you delete them, the stroke will go away because there's no longer a... Uh, the stroke just outlines the shape. So if there's no longer a shape, there's nothing there for this to outline anymore. So this is one way to figure out where everything... All the detritus is chilling in our image here. Um, because, of course, if I turned this off and I turned off the stroke, you would not be able to see all these little pixels that are hanging out. Um, and even if I just turn this on, you can't see them. But you can, the, the Photoshop can, even if I can't. Um, whatever little AI lives in here can see them. So this is one way to go around and clean those up um, so that it looks like it has less chicken pox going on. But the other option here would be I'm going to turn this effect off and I want to go in here and go select color range and just grab the black here and it'll just select my black stuff. I can hit copy paste. And now if I get rid of this and get rid of this and I go ahead and put a curve, a, um, sorry, if I go ahead and get out of the way, if I go ahead and put a stroke on this, you can see I've already got a much cleaner image just from grabbing only the black. So that's helped us out immensely here. And I can go around and clean up these last little errant pixels like so. All right. And I can actually put my white background back in so we can see what we're doing. Um, I have this buddy up here now. That's a lot cleaner. In fact, I'm actually just going to go ahead and delete that under layer. Oh, uh, also something you might want to do if you didn't scan in black and white is bring the saturation down. Obviously, that'll be the first thing you want to do if your image is in color, honestly. Small mention there. 
Um, now I want to go over to filter and I want to go to blur, Gaussian blur, and this is set on four. You really want to have this, I mean, my, my edges are so nasty. You can see how pixelated these edges are. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stick that up to five, um, which is quite blurry. Come down here. I'm going to put curves on this, which pops up over here. And if I extend this, you can see it blurs all my edges outwards. This kind of eats the edges inwards. I want to find a nice balance between those two things. And it will really give me a nice crispified image. I'm going to keep these things pretty close here. Maybe around here. And at this point, I'm just actually going to flatten my image, which will discard my hidden layer. Oops. That's all right. And at this point, I can go ahead delete the white. And technically at this point, I have something much closer to a vector, something that will work perfectly well over in silhouette, but I do want to refine this a little bit more. So I'm going to grab my paint tool. And then now that I have these nice crispy clean edges in here, if I wanted to see how these are all goobly, um, the, the nicer your sketch is, the higher resolution your scan is, the less goobly this will be. So if I wanted to come in here and kind of smooth these out, by hand. I could. Um, let's say I wanted this to be a little bit thicker here. Like so. So I can come in here at this point and play around with just how much I want to fix this image up. And this is one of those things where I'm not very good with my mouse dexterity. So eh. Um, luckily I was going for a kind of handcrafted look so I'm not going to worry too much about this. Sometimes for a curve it's easier if you actually have your brush size larger so you can add on and take away whatever you want so like right here this is connected on me take that away um, this is really gobbledygook in here isn't it let's see if there's anywhere else that really needs just a small removal here but like this is super thin right here and this is kind of icky so just come in here and uh i think the more you zoom in the easier this is and then, of course, if you like some of it, but don't like the rest, you can just go in with the eraser and it's playing back and forth with the eraser. And once again, if you have a tablet and can draw your sketch directly on the computer, good for you, good for you honestly. Um, I don't have that tool, so. All right, I've cleaned this up a little bit more. Now, the other thing I wanted to note is that if this is very thin, 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 thin everywhere, and you wanted it just to like put put it into bold, thicken it up, you can actually add a stroke on, um, and then you can either split this um, and then decide you know how much bolder you want it to be. Um, so if you just need to thicken up a little bit, you could come in here and do that with stroke. Um, same actually if you wanted to make it a little bit thinner, uh, which you could have done in that curves when we were doing that earlier. Um, but you can also do that by whittling it down using the, uh, oop, center this, kind of bite into the design a little bit. And then you could of course rasterize this and delete the white. Um, but just a note. I will go ahead and clear layer style. So once I have this, and this is already a pretty big image, image size, yeah, it's 3000 pixels. Um, you, you want it to be large. Of course, this is a scanned image. So it's this um, size, it's 31 inches wide, my canvas at this point, because it was a scanned uh, direct size for size copy, I guess. Um, so I'm not worried about the size of this. I don't need to make it any larger. This is crisp enough for the silhouette. This, I mean, obviously, if I zoom way in, this is still like not a vector image. It still has blurry edges, but the silhouette will be able to understand this. It's, I don't know where its cutoff is for being able to figure things out, but it's within reason here. 
The other thing I need is a full copy of this. So I will go ahead and crop this image, make it bigger. I'll grab this side, edit, copy, edit, paste, like so. So now I have a whole another one here. Now I can go ahead and transform. I'm going to go ahead and flip this horizontally to mirror it, and I can mirror it. And the, like Photoshop will help me kind of lock into place and line up exactly where that needs to be. Go like this, boop. And now I have a full front here because of course this was one side of my bodice. I will need the other side when I go to cut this out. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up Silhouette Studio here and I will file open and let's see where is our design for today. Bodice front all. That'll do. You can save this in um, Photoshop. Um, I would save this as a PNG if it were me, um, but you can also flatten this and save it as a JPEG if you want. PNG just preserves the transparency and I think it's a fine size. So that's what I went with. But I'll bring this over here. And if you can see, this automatically puts this little bit of a blur on my design and then traces the edge with this very thin red line. And that red line is going to be the cut line for the silhouette. So that is the line that that little cutter on my machine is going to cut around. So anywhere there's a red line, it will cut through there. Just something to know. Now, looking at this, this should be the exact size I drew it on my pattern piece, right? Well, eh, there's been a couple layers of playing telephone here and it may have lost some size. So what I did was I measured this leaf on my sketch to see how wide this leaf should be. And as you can see, this is measuring this full design for me. And also if I click release compound path, it will release each shape individually I can click on this shape and it will tell me what the size of that shape is. So if I want this to be two inches wide, I can grab all of these so that they're all scaling the same amount as I do this. Pull this, click on this, try not to move it when I do that. Click on this buddy, 1766, two, all right, 2.0110, perfect. Um, there also is like a tiny little pixel that this thing has found right at the end of that, so I'll delete that. But now we can see this does not fit on my cutting mat. Also, if you wanted to make a compound path again, you can, and that way you're not losing any of your shapes. But this is not going to be something that I can cut all on one piece, which is part of the reason I left this as a stencil with these breaks, because that means I can grab certain parts of this and then realign them up later and you won't know. So if I take this away and make this a new compound path, make this a new compound path, this is something I can put on another sheet and this one can stay on this sheet. No sheet, right? So I'm gonna take this, cut, open a new page, like so. And now I have these over here. And once again, this isn't gonna fit on my page. Make a compound path, make a compound path, make a compound path. So that I can, so I can arrange these so that they will fit onto one sheet of HTV, like so. And the other thing about this design is that I wanted to cut the leaves and the vines, the swirlies, out of two separate colors of vinyl. So I can't, I didn't need to cut this all out of burgundy if I wanted the leaves to be red instead. So to remove the leaves, I'm going to release my compound path, take anything, and I'm going to press the shift key on my keyboard while I click around so it will select everything I'm clicking on and click everything I want to be a different color. Boop, like so. Edit, cut. All right, so now I just have these swirls. I'll cut that out of burgundy. I'll make a new page, paste, just have my leaves here. You can make that a compound path so it will just fit in perfectly. If you cut this and you cut this, they should line up absolutely perfect. Nothing has been moved. But of course, this is a lot of wasted space when it comes to cutting this out of vinyl. So you can, again, release compound path. This is what I was talking about in the video earlier. And maybe even just make these grouped so that they have the same spacing. It's a kind of a game between how much HTV do you want to waste and how much do you want to have to reposition everything once you get over to the ironing board. Um, so depends on the person how much you want to be able to do that. You can also move these like so. Of course, now these no longer line up nicely with my image over here. So I'd have to realign them, but I'm wasting a lot less material doing it like this. And so this is how I went about and did all the designs for the dress from last time. All right, let's talk about finding a design on the internet as opposed to drawing one yourself. So if I just went over here on Pinterest or on Google or, or whatever search engine you prefer, I'm just gonna type in beetle clip art up here. 
and search and this is what we get um, so we have images all kinds of images here and some of them are going to be good for using htv and the cutter and some are not so for example something that would not work this buddy <laughs> see all these tiny tiny little specks um the cutter depending on the scale you print this out can cut those but why make the knife work that hard uh you're going to lose that i mean this you would have to really posterize it so you don't want any, any images that have too many little tiny 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 bits um, keep it kind of clean think stencil thoughts this would work perfectly in htv this would work perfectly in HTV. Um, this is like on the edge. So some of these lines here are really thin. If you're printing it out at a big enough scale, it should be fine. But like even something like this, where these lines are super, super thin. If I was printing this out to be three inches by three inches, probably too small. If I was printing this out to be 12 by 12, no problem. So just keep in mind how small the cutter can go. It can go pretty small, at least on this silhouette cameo, it can go pretty small, but you wanna be kind of careful um, in general. And like all these images, of course, some of them are copyright free, some of them are copyrighted, some of them are random uh, tiles from the Home Depot. You know, all kinds of different images are coming up here. If you're using it for your own personal use, use whatever you want, honestly. Um, you know, use whatever graphic you want. This one's probably from a book from 1923. Uh, oh, 1910, excuse me. Um, so like you can find designs that are um, either out of copyright or if you're using it for your own personal use and not making money off of it, knock yourself out, honestly. Of course, there is also the option just to draw whatever you want, but like something like this is gonna work better than this. And that's just how it, like all these little tiny lines. Again, if you were to scale this up giant so that these lines are at least an eighth of an inch thick, then sure, but at this scale, no. Especially like even this image, it could cut this, um, underside of a beetle or whatever this is. Underside of pupae of a tiger beetle, vintage illustration. Thank you, Pinterest. Um, when you go to cut this out of the vinyl, it'll do all these little tiny bits, but then you have to peel each of those little tiny bits of vinyl away. So it's gonna create a much more annoying design to weed, which is what we call it when we take away the vinyl we don't need from the plastic backing. All these little bits to weed out. It's not like it's impossible. You can do it. It's just going to be time consuming and slightly tiresome depending on how many designs you're using. But let me go ahead and try and find one of these that I want to use for this demo here. Let's go ahead and grab this scarab beetle because I think it's going to be a good one to show what we need to do here. So go ahead and open image a new tab. That's going to give us the biggest like version of it. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Go back over to Photoshop here. New. Paste. All right. Now, background. I'm going to delete that. I'm also going to delete this background just by selecting it and saying goodbye um, with my magic wand tool over here. Also this little, thank you, buddy. You've served your purpose. Goodbye. Now this, in order again to have the best, I mean, this is not so bad, but I personally probably would like want to clean these up. Um, and you can see this image is only, what is it? Pixels 564 pixels. It's not going to be enough for us. We're going to need a a higher resolution image here. So what I'm going to do is image size 2000. Whoa, that's right. And you can see this makes my edge already quite blurry, but we will add a Gaussian blur on top of that as well. And I'm going to actually just delete these bits because it's going to be kind of annoying for the cutter and for me. So let's just get rid of those. And I want to take away a little bit of extra space in here like so, just so that this is a little bit wider in there. Um, and now I will go up filter, blur, Gaussian blur. This is too much, honestly, for this. Uh, I can probably get away with like a three. Let's do that. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a background layer for us so we can see what we're doing. Boop. Pull that down underneath, select this layer and go ahead and put a curve on here. And once again, I'm just going to adjust the dark and the light here until I get something I like again. On this side, it's gonna have a thicker line basically. And over here, it's going to eat away more of my image, but I wanna find sort of a happy medium between these things. I wanna keep these thick enough that the machine can cut them out. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and flatten that. I wanna turn off the locked, I'm gonna turn off the lock down here on this layer. That way I can select my background here and again, delete that. So this is a transparent image. And then we have our transparent beetle here who is much bigger than he was before, which is important. 
go ahead and save this as beetle on my computer. And I will go over here, oh, open a new sheet over here in Silhouette. I'm going to open beetle. There he is. Once again, this is going to go ahead and just trace this automatically for me. If you give it a nice crisp black and white image, a vector, it's going to trace it for you. So um, if you are more uh, technologically advanced than I am and know how to use Illustrator and create vector images easily, way more easily than I'm showing in this video, that's for sure, um, then this will be no problem for you. But this will trace this uh, automatically and it will stay traced no matter how large I make it. So I can make this a large six inch by eight inch beetle or I can make this a nice small beetle, something that's 1.5 by two ish like so. And the other thing to keep in mind when doing this is um, there's a, if I send this over here, once my design is finished, if I wanted to cut just one little beetle, um, I'm gonna do heat transfer smooth. Let's say I'm cutting this out of some silver metallic. So I know that my blade depth needs to be three, the force needs to be seven, speed eight, all good to go here, passes one. It's on auto blade, it's gonna cut. If I come down here and I hit send, it's gonna ask me, have you mirrored your design? And it's asking this because the material I feed into the machine, it's cutting out on the back side of that material. So whatever I cut out, it's going to be reversed when I flip that material over and stick the sticky side down onto my fabric. So this is not super important unless you're doing something asymmetric and you want the left to be the left and the right to be the right. Or if you are doing something with text and words because you're gonna wanna mirror those if you want the text to be readable. So that's something that's very important to keep in mind if you're doing anything with text. If you don't care if something is mirrored, like I wouldn't about this beetle, then this doesn't matter. And you can just hit send as is. If not, if you haven't mirrored your design already, make sure you hit send mirrored. All right, so hopefully this was in any way uh, illustrative of how I've been taking designs from either my brain or from the World Wide Web and making them silhouette software friendly so that I cut them out on my Cameo here in the studio. I assume softwares for other craft cutters are quite similar. I've only ever worked with a silhouette. Again, this is not sponsored. I'm not sponsored by them. I just finally invested in one of these machines because I already knew how to use them. And that's the reason I chose this one. I will have a shorter and more fun little project video coming out using HTV to make over a vintage accessory later in the week. So I'll see you again here real soon for that. Bye.